we said before. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have not met uh, the public servants and the staff that have been involved in this, but I have been told that they are salt of the earth, hard-working, very good people, and in no way deserved this kind of treatment. Um, I find myself um, standing here and agreeing with a lot of what the Leader of the Opposition um, has said in this debate, um, and finding um, myself in a position where we certainly take the role of um, whistleblowers and public servants incredibly seriously. Uh, this, um, this investigation that has been done um, at the urging of the uh, State Services Commissioner is something that we will be taking very seriously. I am pleased to see that these, um, these whistleblowers will be given compensation uh, and that they have received an apology from the State Services Commissioner, as I would expect they would, should do, in person. And now I think there's a wider problem for us to then look at to addressing, and that is about how we look at very old legislation, and I'm just going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so, as has been discussed, um, we had an investigation that's been carried out by Deputy State Services, um, former Deputy State Services Commissioner Sandy Beatty. Um, it was in response, of course, to public concern that public servants raised issues about Mrs. Harrison's, um, Ms. Harrison's activities. Uh, I uh, am kind of tempted to use quite strong language in regard to Joanne Harrison, but let's just make it clear that she was a sophisticated, deceitful and manipulative person who took advantage of her senior position at the Ministry of Transport and has been dealt with um, through the courts uh, as she should be. At no point, though, should hard-working public servants who are expressing concerns um, genuinely and are doing the right thing feel in any way that they should be treated um, in any way except for respectfully and that there should be a process that supports them um, in that. And if the legislation is not up to date enough and is not doing the job as it should, which I think this investigation quite clearly shows us there should have been those protections there, then I am more than willing um, as the Minister of State Services to look at that and ensure it. I have a huge amount of respect for our public servants. I think they do an incredible job, um, from those that work at the front counter of work and income and the police, um, through to those that give us policy advice and, um, and the leaders within the public service as well. And I think that uh, they deserve our protection and they deserve our recognition for the hard work that they do. And uh, I must say it's one of the reasons I'm always uh, absolutely um, thrilled to be the Minister of State Services, because I get to see the best of them and how they work and they deserve our respect for it. Um, so Ms Beattie has found that four staff within the Ministry of Transport raised concerns um, about Joanne Harrison's behaviour and then suffered disadvantage, and it's the language um, that Ms Beattie uses um, throughout her investigation, um, that they then suffered disadvantage in the processes um, that, was, that were involved. No staff were made redundant because they raised the concerns. Um, it is the belief of the investigation that those redundancies were going to happen um, anyway, at, but they were disadvantaged because it wasn't done in the right way. It was done earlier than it should have been, and there can be absolutely no doubt that um, Ms Harrison had a role to play in that, and as such, that is the disadvantage. So they found that, as I say, they were not made redundant because of raising the concerns about Joanne Harrison, but she did find that the redundancies were due to the Ministry moving to an automated accounts payable process. This was a planned move that was legitimate for the Ministry, um, and that Joanne Harrison actually had no control over that actual decision. However, the investigation did find that these staff suffered a disadvantage and unnecessary hurt and humiliation um, due to the process that was followed when they were made redundant and that um, Ms Harrison was involved in that process. Uh, and, and I think it is as much for that hurt and humiliation uh, that I stand here as a Minister of State Services and say no public servant should be treated that way. None should have to go through that in any way, shape or form. And uh, one shouldn't be playing favourites, but these were very hard-working, long-service um, public servants, I'm, I'm led to believe. And so uh, should, there's no way that their careers should have been ending in that kind of way. Um, so, Mr uh, Speaker... 
Uh, Ms Beatty has re recommended that these staff receive an apology and that the State Services Commissioner work with them to reach an um, agreement on appropriate compensation. Um, the State Services Commissioner has met with these former staff members and their families. Um, he has thanked them for their public service. He has apologised to them for the treatment they received after raising genuine and well-founded concerns. Um, and he is happy to and did repeat that apology um, publicly as well. Um, he's also agreed with them that there will be a package um, of redress and settlement for the disadvantage uh, that they suffered. Um, the other point of it is then getting to what we can do about the whistleblowing and the actual legislation and what's happening there. So Ms Beatty also identified two other cases where individual Ministry of Transport staff may have been treated badly by Ms Harris. These were not related to whistleblowing and are outside of the investigation's terms of reference. Um, however, uh, the State Services Commissioner passed it on to Mr Mercy and he's looking at it, um, the Chief Executive, so that they can go through that. Um, there are recommendations for steps that the public service um, sector agencies can take to support their staff who raise these concerns to make sure that they can do that safely. Uh, the, a, um, the State Services Commissioner, Peter Hughes, um, has actually made some very strong standards um, and issued standards for government agencies on effective systems, because um, I think we do need to look at the whole way that the systems go through to ensure that actually we're getting this right. Um, so the Commissioner has been very upfront that uh, those standards need to be met. He has ensured that it goes out to every agency so that everyone's very clear what they ha are. He's published the standards um, on really making sure, as I said, that we've got those effective systems, including um, under the Protected Disclosures Act. So he's also recommending that the government um, look at the Protected Disclosures Act and that it needs to be reviewed and updated. It's 17 years old. Um, it would be fair to say it no longer reflects international best practice, and we need to make it more update, up to date and make it more friendly, um, user friendly, and for people making disclosures to introduce proper reporting and monitoring um, requirements. I'm very happy to uh, look at that, um, at that act. I'm very happy to take his recommendations. Um, I've heard one of the opposition members talk about what that process should be um, for how we should go through the changes in the Act. I'm quite happy for there to be. Um, I haven't really thought through what that process would be as far as consultation um, and how it would be, but I'm very happy for that to be as um, wide-reaching as it kind of needs to be. Um, Mr Speaker, a couple of things. I think that we have a lot to be proud of in this country, actually, when it comes to our public service, um, most definitely, and that we are one of the most transparent and least corrupted pl corrupt places in the world. Um, we don't get to stay at that top and to stay there unless we're actually doing something about it when we come across incidences like this um, and make that kind of difference that needs to be done. Um, we need to remember that our public service does an outstanding job, that we are the equal least corrupt country according to Transparency International, um, that we're, mo we're the most prosperous country in the world, that we are the first for ease of doing business, um, that we're the third greatest for economic freedom, I must say as well. But when it comes to that transparency um, and corruption, I think that this is a vital part of it, as our public service are seen as independent, that they're seen as uh, not being party political, and that they are able to address very real concerns that they have and make sure that they're taken seriously and that they are kept safe. And uh, if that means that we need to update the Act and make sure that it's in line with what really needs to be done, then, as I say, um, I, as the Minister, am really up for doing that. Um, Mr Speaker, I'm not sure there's a lot more I can add, um, except for um, I'm very happy in my role as the State Services Commissioner um, to recognise the hurt and humiliation um, of those public servants that, as I say, um, from the report, from what I've seen, certainly should not have happened. Um, I too offer my apologies to them. I would like to see them treated fairly, which is what the State Services Commissioner is doing. Um, he's the right person to be doing that as the leader of our State Services. Um, I'm going to look at the Act and go through that with the Commissioner, taking his advice, but also making sure that the Public Service has a genuine, and the unions, um, the PSA and um, New Pay, make sure that they have a real say in what that looks like and how we keep people safe and protected. Thank you. Jan Logie. Mr Speaker, I rise to take a call on behalf